Welcome to the March episode of the EV Show. We've got a great show for you today, and we got a great car as well. We're here in Chicano Park underneath the Coronado Bridge. We're gonna go over to Coronado and spend the day in this 914. Let's take a look at the car that's gonna take us there. We have a 1974 Porsche 914. It's a great little car, low center of gravity. It's actually one of the most commonly converted cars that you'll find out there. I think one of the reasons why is it's nice and lightweight and it's really low. It's got a great uh, coefficient of aerodynamics to it, so you get really good range out of this car, even with a small battery pack. This one's got about 30 kilowatt hours of energy, so plenty of juice to take us the distance. Oh, and it has a lot of pep to it. Too. Right, it's got a lot of pep. <laughs> and this actually has the same drive line as last month's show, uh, 818. the 818, yeah. And you know, the 818's not around anymore. It got uh, sold to uh, overseas. It got sold overseas. And it was so in demand, the guy booked an airline flight ticket for it home, didn't right. even put it on the boat. Right, immediately after the episode, I hear uh, the guy just got like an incredible offer he couldn't refuse. The plane flew first class to China. Yeah. <laughs> the car flies better than we do. <laughs> That's an expensive ticket. Yeah. Well, let's jump in this thing and take it for a little drive. We'll head over the bridge. Let's go. go spend the day in Coronado. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Excited. We got a little afternoon in Coronado. Should oh, be pretty nice. Look at this. It's awesome. It's like 85 sunny. This is why we in March. Yeah. It's almost St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> it's getting redundant. Look at downtown San Diego. Oh, man. Okay, so there's a lot of news to go over. There's a lot of things that I've been reading about uh, from a multitude of car manufacturers. What's uh, going on? Oh yeah, man, EVs have been in the news lately because the Geneva Car Show, everybody's making announcements. You know, you got Porsche, Koenigsegg, Audi, Volkswagen. I mean, everybody's coming out with an EV in the next two to three years. Every, everyone jumped on like in the last week. It was like a 50% landslide of people coming into the market. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to be a genius to understand. If you don't get into this market now, as a major you know, manufacturer, you're gonna be left behind. Uh, it, I think it's validated the whole business model just right. in, in one big announcement over the week. <laughs> so the EV market in about three, four years from now is just going to be crazy. I mean, there's already 22 EVs for sale. There's going to be, what, double that? Yeah, but 40 something cars already announced. Right. So what right. about this car that goes zero to 200 yeah. in 20 seconds? Yeah, the Koenigsegg Regera, the first mega car. It's not a hypercar. That's incredible. Mega car. Hey, yeah. What do they want for that? What's their sale price? On? Oh, geez, I don't even know. What do they say? If you have to ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but they're calling. It's interesting because they're calling it a mega car because it's got like 1,300 horsepower, which is uh, translates roughly over to a thousand watts. That's insane. Excuse me, a thousand kilowatts. That's insane. A hundred thousand watts is one mega car. Oh, that's a mega car. Yeah, it's a mega car. We got Formula E coming up. Actually, Formula E is racing today in Miami. And they're coming to Long Beach. And they're coming to Long Beach. And we said we're going to make plans uh, April 4th. The race is at 4 in the afternoon. Yeah. 4 p.m. April 4th. Yeah. And we are going to be meeting at Famous Dave's Barbecue in Long Beach yep. at noon. Yeah. And come on by, check our social media sites, or just come on down to Famous Dave's. We're on the outside patio area. Yeah, it's right there on Shoreline Drive between turns two and three. Yeah. And uh, we'll, yeah, we'll be outside the patio. The tickets for the event are free, so we'll be able to walk and go into the grandstands as a group and uh, hang out. And I know there's a lot of people uh, who've been talking to Michael and myself about coming. I know the EV show, uh, the EV uh, car club from LA is coming. You've got some guys coming from Seattle. Oh yeah, we got a lot of people coming in from out of town. We got Nick Smith coming over from New Zealand. We got uh, some guys coming down. Yeah, the Washington guys are coming down. All Mike the Palmer's are coming down. The yeah. Are all coming. James Pauley. Nathan's down from Canada. 
God, I love this car. <laughs> right? Oh, that smells like some serious rubber. <laughs> That'd be like a quiet residential knock oh. on the door. Hi, we're here. <laughs> Hello? Yes, that's us. That's us. <laughs> oh, man. Love it. You know, most people have, you know, an image and corporate cards and letterhead and stuff. We just have this puff of smoke <laughs> with a screeching noise. 3D that you can oh, feel and God. smell. So Formula E is going to be great. We're going to have a good time in Long Beach and uh, get the gang together. You know, speaking of the gang, John is making some good progress on the Earl motorcycle uh, project, little sidecar. I see he's been doing a tremendous amount of research as to the history and the current capabilities in other countries of the Earl. Yeah, I see. rockets, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Let's have a. Uh... John, why don't you go ahead and explain? The load capacity of the motorcycle sidecar is four rockets of 9K111 or 9K113. A combination of high speed and effectiveness of arms provided the superior battle results. The motorcycle is suitable for different climatic conditions, starting with Arctic zone and ending up with tropics, effective destroying the enemy forces. So I don't know about the four rockets, but I've got four 18650 batteries mounted in the sidecar. I'm also working on a transmission and motor adapter with a BMW airhead clutch and that's gonna that's in the process right now but the big news is this gravity skateboard a Larry Bertelman edition I'm giving it away I'm raffling it off I should say and go to roselli.biz for the details it'll have all the information you need to know there so until next time see you then so, dude we are jumping the motorcycle. We're, ju that's we're jumping it. We're taking it. We're just <laughs> <laughs> launching that thing, right? Full combat training. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't. When we get that out of shop, we're going to go do donuts. And right, right. That thing was like five feet off the ground. Oh, my God. And that's like a recent <laughs> Russian video. Yeah. Unbelievable. High tech. <laughs> So the, uh, the Gia finally left the shop. The Gia left the shop. We didn't want it to leave. We liked it so much. In fact, we had the guys from AOL, uh, the TransLogic guys, come down, do a little filming in it. They loved that car. Yeah, they loved it. It's, Everybody loves it. it it's just, you know, we, we returned it to the owner, right? Uh, reluctantly. Within 30 minutes of driving it, somebody left a note on his windshield. Some cute girl wanted a ride. Yeah, you, uh, you almost had a, a sentimental moment when that car left the shop. So <laughs> you went and recorded one last uh, uh, round with the car. You had a date with the car. I had a date with the car. Should we go take a look? Let's see how much romance was there. <laughs> Let's see the bromance. <laughs> Today we have a true German classic for you. This is a 1969 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, and we're going to show you our complete kit that we used to convert this car. This car was originally made from 1955 to 1974, came with a 1600 cc motor. Our kit almost doubles the horsepower and the torque of that motor. We have a 62 kilowatt motor, we got it hooked up to a 22 kilowatt hour battery pack that's good for about eh, 80 miles if you drive nice and fast like you should, maybe 60. And we got a 2.5 kilowatt charger, level two, that's good to recharge it in about eight hours. We're gonna take a quick drive in the car, we're gonna take a quick look at the kit and see how it integrates into this classic. Here we are at the back of the car and you can see we've cleaned things up quite a bit. Without the big stinky motor back here, there's actually plenty of room in the engine compartment to carry things if you want to. We've got our typical controller and motor mount, kind of nice one unit, four bolts installs it. We've got our beauty plates on either side and those actually serve a function. This side over here, we got our DC-DC converter and then on the far side over there, we have our cooling system. I mean, nice and clean, easy to bolt up, just goes right in. So here we are up at the front of the car and you can see our battery box. It bolts right into the factory bolt hole locations for the gas tanks. If you ever had a Carmen Ghia, you know as soon as you open this trunk, you're just overcome with gas fumes because almost always the sending unit and the filler tube on the uh, gas tank leak and so it throws gas everywhere up here. And uh, the rest of the battery pack is nicely tucked behind the rear seat so you don't even see that. So that's pretty much the extent of the battery pack that comes with this kit. What a great driving car this is. Nice and smooth. Carmen Ghia is nice and low to the ground. It's kind of like a little sports car. Its biggest problem is it just never really had power before. Now with the electric conversion, you pretty much have it all. You got the good looks, the great handling, and now you actually have power. <laughs> what a concept. 
So this car has a great feature called variable brake regen. It's the sort of thing that you find in like a Chevy Volt. Basically, when you apply the brakes, there's a transducer that tells the motor to turn into a generator, slow the car down, and put some of that energy back at the battery pack. It's much better than heating up the friction brakes, and it certainly makes them last a lot longer. It's a great feature. The neat thing about this is, is you can shift through the gears and kind of stay connected to the car. But at the same time, if you're in traffic, you can drive it like a golf cart. Just leave it in third gear, come to a complete stop, need to start stop on a hill, not a problem, no clutch needed, just give it the accelerator pedal. So we can really kind of drive this thing without shifting. I think this car here will do about 90 miles an hour in third gear, so it's really not much of a need to ever shift unless you really want to kind of drive the car in a spirited fashion. For this particular kit, we only needed to add two gauges to the dash. We have our state of charge gauge over here, which tells us how much battery we have left. And then over here on the other side, we have the motor gauge, which tells us the RPM and the temperature of the motor, other crucial things like that. The nice thing about it is, is the Carmen Ghia already provides for these cutouts on the dash, so we didn't have to do any cutting of any metal. I mean, really uh, retaining the classic nature of this dash over here, not altering it at all. Well, that about sums up our test drive in the 1969 Carmen Ghia. We got a great kit for it, complete, includes everything you need. If you got an old classic, put some new life into it. With EV West, I'm Michael Breen. We'll see you next time. An old classic. Hey, if I don't answer your call today, you know why. Oh, a nice uh, uh, video work <laughs> with the Ghia. Zoom, 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 <laughs> zoom. Are you jealous of the flybys? Zoom, zoom. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I, I would have hit the camera that was lying in the street. Right. So, so uh, battery balancing, I saw you over there with that mad scientist uh, on the desk in the afternoon whipping uh, that device together. I used a soldering iron. Well, and a piece of pipe and a bunch of wires and some sparks. Right. Using that engineering degree to its fullest extent. So the idea is that you bring the balance of all the batteries to the bottom, kind of like emptying a beer, right. a soda, right right down the edge, make sure right. they're all level, yep. and then you recharge them equally yep. so you don't have any batteries. Make sure off. they're all 12 ounce cans, nobody gets more or less. Yeah, so you gotta share. Yeah, gotta share. It's a, it's a share economy. Yeah. So we can go into some technical terms. In fact, uh, why don't we watch me build the balancer, and then I toss it over to Jehu, and he shows us how to use it. Excellent. All right, let's check out some battery balancing. Today we're going to talk about balancing batteries and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick assembly of our easy yet super affordable battery balancer. It's very effective and it sets an alarm when you hit your desired voltage and go through your whole pack pretty easy. I'm going to show you how to assemble it real quick and then we're going to turn it over to Jehu Garcia and he's going to show you how to use this. So when you get our kit it includes a few things. I'm going to run through them here. Your battery cable with your uh, thick leads, uh, your voltage sensing leads, a 10th ohm 300 watt resistor. It's going to draw down the battery, a couple of gland nuts. Uh, a power supply, a uh, beeper, and a little voltage uh, display. It tells you your voltage and then a tiny little case to put it in, um, and a little piece of pipe. And this just kind of keeps it uh, insulated from burning things and shorting out. So we're just going to go through the steps. It's super simple, super easy. We're going to take our uh, resistor, we're going to hold it up to our pipe here, and we're going to measure two spots. We're going to kind of center it. We're just going to measure two spots and drill some holes. Now that our holes are drilled, we're just going to go ahead, we're going to insert our gland nuts in there. Just going to sense them down. Super quick, super easy. We're going to take this wire right here and on the end we're going to crimp on two little ring terminals. And those ring terminals are going to allow us to uh, mount right... Oh wow, I'm throwing shit. Now that our gland nuts are in the insulator, we're just going to crimp on a ring terminal to our battery cable here. Alright, so we got our little ring terminals on there. I don't know if you can see those little ring terminals. And we're just going to go ahead and feed them through our gland nuts here and uh, poke them inside. Super simple, super easy. Right on through like that. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to slide this inside and you kind of got to get some needle nose pliers to get in there, but we're going to attach this to our ring terminals and then pull it tight, pull these tight, and we're going to cinch this down, secure it inside of here. One quick little trick here is to pull enough uh, this slack through that you have enough room up here pull the resistor out and it makes it a lot easier to go ahead and mount it on there. Gives you plenty of room. Makes it a little easier to tighten the little nut and bolt on there. All right, now that both ends are secured to the resistor, we're just gonna pull the slack out of this and really cinch this down to the point where the ends of the ring terminals actually go back into the gland nut. And once they do that, you can really tighten down this gland nut 
you get that thing nice and secure and what you'll end up with is the resistor in the middle of the tube like this and it just kind of keeps uh, the hottest part of the battery balancer you know away from uh, melting things and uh, burning anybody so nice and secure in there now we're going to take the clamp end of our battery cable here and what we're going to do is we're going to take our voltage sense leads now you get a lot of voltage sag when this is hooked up to a load so to avoid that what we're going to do if you look here the load part of this attaches to this side of the clamp so we're actually going to feed our cable. We're going to go up and over and attach to the far side of the clamp here. So that way we're drawing from uh, the side of the clamp that doesn't have a load on it. And we'll get a much more accurate voltage reading that way. A quick tip here on soldering and cable routing. We're going to take our voltage sense lead and slip it through the clamp, uh, the little insulator for the clamp here. We're going to take it over to the other side. We're going to pull this one off. We're going to pre-tin our uh, cable here and we're going to pre-tin the clamp and that'll make it nice and easy uh, for us to solder. We're just going to go in there like that, pull this tight, slip the other end over it. Okay, now that I got my voltage sense lead soldered in there, I'm going to tuck it up in the spring there so it's a little bit hidden, pull the slack out of it and uh, put my insulators back on. That way it's nice and clean and our sense lead comes out like that. Now that we have our two sense leads, I'm going to run these down to about right here and uh, to clean it up, I'm going to go ahead and twist these wires together just to give it a little bit of a cleaner look. I'm going to pinch my fingers about 10 inches down there. I'm going to go ahead and spin that. Now we have our sense leads nice and clean and then uh, they come off here like this. We're going to solder them into the power supply. This is a small step up power supply and it takes our 2.7 to 3 volts and brings it up to uh, about 10 volts and we're basically tricking the system into thinking that it's uh, at a higher voltage than it really is. And the reason for this is our little uh, warning system here uh, it won't run at two and a half volts. Almost no electronics will. So we need to bring it up. So we're kind of doing a tricky little thing here. We're spoofing it. And um, basically we're going to take this input to the input side of our power supply. And the power supply is going to take that 2.7 volts and bring it up to about 10 volts. And we're going to use some remote control car parts to uh, basically monitor that voltage and tell us when we're low. So the monitoring side of it is going to see about 10 volts, but the input side is going to see about 2.7, which is where we want to balance our battery at. All right, now that I got my voltage sense lead soldered onto my power supply input, on the output, I'm going to put our beeper. What that's going to do, it's going to step up the voltage so our beeper sees around 10 volts. When this falls below 10 volts, it's going to send an alarm signal that's going to tell us that we're ready to switch the battery. All right, now that I have my power supply soldered up with my input and my output here, I'm going to solder our little voltage display to the input so I can always read my input voltage. I hooked it up to a power supply and turned that power supply down to about 2.7 volts. What I'm going to do now is calibrate it. If you don't have a power supply, just run one of your batteries down to your desired balance voltage, 2.7, 2.8 volts, and then go ahead and calibrate it with that first battery. Once you get it calibrated, you can repeat it with all the batteries in your battery set and you'll have the same voltage across the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly turn the calibration pot down until I get the beeper to give me a warning beep. This is a multi-turn pot, so you're going to end up turning the screw 10, 20 times before you get it to the right point. What I'm doing is I'm turning it clockwise. When you get close, be sure and turn the adjustment screw nice and slow. So there we go, we're at 2.7 volts and our alarm is sounded. I can go ahead and turn my voltage up on the power supply, just a touch here, and you can see we're back to a normal condition. So what this is gonna do is as your battery drains down, it's gonna hit the same point every time and trigger the alarm. Now it doesn't really matter if it's 2.77 or 2.68, as long as it's consistent every time. So after you calibrate your power supply for the first time, don't touch it again. Now that we're calibrated to clean things up, we're gonna go ahead and zip tie these wires together. We're gonna to put it in this case so it doesn't short out on anything. Drill a small little hole in here so the cables can go in and out. And there we have our balancer. If I'm moving a little too fast for you, that's okay. We've got instructions online on the product page. All right, so there's the assembly of our quick and easy battery balancer. I'm done here, so I'm going to turn it over to Jehu, and he's going to show you how to use it. Jehu. All right. Welcome to another quick tip this month on the EV show. Uh, I guess today we're going to be bottom balancing batteries. So let's get started. Uh, Michael did a very good job here at putting this guy together. Pretty simple device. Um, you're going to be able to use this on pretty much uh, most of the batteries that you want to bottom balance. You can do it on, you know, prismatics. Uh, you can do it on 18650s like I'm going to do here. The only thing that you have to keep uh, in mind is that your battery 
has to be of a certain size since this guy will pull somewhere around 20 to 30 amps your battery has to be big enough so that it doesn't stress out at that load uh, for example you won't be able to do a single 18650 uh, and then bottom balance that battery. I mean, you can do it, but this guy isn't really not gonna like it. It's gonna get too hot. It's gonna become a fire hazard. You're actually gonna ruin the battery. And so it has to be somewhere around probably, uh, like if, if the battery doesn't like anything more than one C, so it's, this is 20 to 30 amps. So your battery has to be somewhere around one and a, one and a half times bigger than that. So you're looking at about 50 amp hour cell uh, as your minimum uh, to be able to uh, bottom balance it with this. So let's get started. It's actually pretty simple. Once this guy is uh, put together, then you basically just connect it to your battery. In this case, I'm gonna do this giant brick here that you guys seen me before put together. This is uh, 150 18650 cells. Uh, and so it should be around 300 amp hours. And so, we're going to use this as our test battery to put it to bottom balance it. So the negative goes to the negative. You got to make sure you, you, you create good contact because there's going to be quite a bit of load going on here and it could get hot. All right, so we heard a little beep and um, this guy here is basically telling us that the battery is at 3.9897 volts. So it turns out this battery is f almost fully charged and since it's 300 amp hours, it is gonna take quite a bit of time. So we don't have that kind of time right now and you guys don't wanna sit and, you know, here watching this thing forever. So we'll just show you this next month and see how we did. We're gonna run this whole thing all the way to the bottom until it gets to 2.7 or, or the alarm goes off. And then we'll do a little time lapse and then you guys get to see uh, how this went. Uh, you can right away start to feel that, that there is a little bit of heat coming out of here. I bet you with the, after a few minutes, the, the heat is actually gonna be quite substantial. So you gotta make this, you gotta make sure you put this somewhere where it's not gonna, uh, you know, get, into, get you into trouble. Um, but with this shield here, it shouldn't be too much of a deal. Like uh, uh, here, like on this table, for example, it should be uh, perfectly fine. So we'll see you next month and we'll show you the results. Uh, we'll show you how long it took for this guy to bottom balance a fully charged 300 amp hour cell all the way down to 2.7 volts. All right, till next time, see you later. Jehu Garcia here. Well, what's even neater is the shop is getting really technical. And I saw that Trent was doing some neat work with the Fiat. And I, I thought I heard some rap music and there was some record spinning going on. And I was blown away when I came out and what I saw over there. What was Trent doing? <laughs> I think he was uh, getting creative. Was right? he working out or something? Yeah. <laughs> Time to kick it old let's school. Go, let's, let's go see what <laughs> Mixmaster Trent's up to. Let's see it. Take it away, Trent. Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. All right, guys, ever seen how to move a Fiat Belly around the shop? Easy way. Give it to my baby. Mixmaster Trent and the Jolly Scratchers. <laughs> oh, where are we going next? You got a... Well, a Fiat to a Fiat. A Fiat to a Fiat. That's now, fitting, right? No, yeah, take it away. Yeah, let's... let's. Yeah. You want to talk about it? You want to lead them in? I think it speaks for itself. What are we going to see? Trunk monkey? Fiat. Fiat. It's haunted. <laughs> the haunted Fiat. Let's see the progress on the Fiat. We busted out the uh, total strip down of the Fiat in one day. It's ready for its electrification. 
The uh, ferro arm came out on this project already. It's designed and uh, mapped the motor mounts so we can get the brackets in for the AC50 we've decided to go with. And the transmission's been mapped. That's a perfect setup so we're ready to go out of the shop. We're going to send this car off to have it painted red, just the original color restored, and we're going to keep the tan. So let's go look at where we're going to put the batteries. What's happening, James? Hey, mate. Check out this chick's down under. <laughs> I love Australia. Right here in the back, we're going to put four of the 18650 battery modules. They'll fit perfectly where the seat was. Man, this Fiat's got one heck of a big trunk. If a big fellow like me could fit in here, this is going to be a rage monster. This can go 150 miles if we use 12 of the modules, the 18650s. So we're going to be a little over 100 miles range with the 8. And, uh, We'll have that expansion if we want to take it up to 150 miles, have a real good daily driver with some range. What's up, trunk monkey? Did you see the foot on the car? Did you I, saw, see? I saw the trunk monkey. The trunk monkey? That's like a gorilla. That's a huge oh, yeah. monkey. Yeah. So I, I just can't believe that you can fit 12 modules in the back of the Fiat. Oh, yeah. When we get that done, we're only going to put eight in with a 50. AC50, yeah. and it's going to be over 100 mile range. If we put a full 12 modules in there, that's a the range monster. It's going to oh, be yeah. like, it's going to be a beast. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And that car has no rust. It's an easy car to get. Uh, that'll be similar to uh, Z Electric's bug program. Oh, yeah. We can kick those cars oh, out yeah. the door. So I saw the article, they're bringing the Fiat 124 back. Oh, the FAR 2016 yeah. Yeah. on the Mazda chassis, yep. the 124 is coming yep. back to life. Yeah, and you know what that's going to do to the value of those old Spiders out there? It's going to push them up. They're going to like the old ones. Right. But the thing, they, they aren't bringing it out in electric, which I thought they might have announced that if they were smart in Geneva. Uh, you know, by the time they're ready to bring this thing out, they're going to realize they should have made it electric. Hey, bro, thanks for driving today. I really appreciate your professional driving. I love driving with the <laughs> world's uh, certified fastest street electric car driver. Oh, I thank you. You and your magazines, what do you got today? I'm relaxing, you make me feel comfortable. Well, I always got some good stuff. You know, I'm always reading something to learn oh. more about the EV industry. Right? I'm not, I'm not more than it looks like I really am. Well, you got Look, some You got some catching Siri, up to do. This is legitimate articles <laughs> in Penthouse. It's the People's Electric Vehicle talking about Z Electric bugs, uh, bringing back restoration and conversion to electric cars. And Incredible. The David's doing a great job. David and Bonnie are awesome. And this is even better. Yuri, don't let this get to your head, but let me read you a little quote out of this right here. It says, this well-engineered and thoughtful, thoughtfully packaged surprise, which was developed with wheel smoke, just kidding, with industry legends at EV West, Michael Bream and Matt Hoover. Industry legend? I never thought I would be called a legend. No, I'm, I'm, House Magazine. I'm driving around the legend now. Dude, you're legendary. Oh, I was going to take that quote, put it on the website. Legend. You got to change your business title to The Ledge. The Ledge. The Ledge. <laughs> the Ledge. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, March issue right there. <laughs> Read about EV West and Z Electric Motors. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Okay, this is this, this is the test to see if the intern's intern can understand schematics. Oh, I see you're brushing up. You found our new uh, schematic download section on the website. Uh huh. Yeah. This is the junior schematic of a DC motor installation. It says EV West. Yeah, this is great. We have a self service now. You can go to our website, go to the resources tab. We got some downloadable schematics for some people. You know, we get we get a lot of common questions like, how do you hook this up? You know, what do the batteries hook up to? So we got a neat little schematic you can download. It shows where the fuse is and the safety cutoff switch, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, even I can read a schematic. Well, you're going to have to. You know, like we got that one for the Ferrari up at the wall, five feet by three feet. <laughs> I can't believe it's really not much of a schematic. It's this death list of how many wires we are keeping. It's like the large print edition for you, right? I, I got to get it big because I can't see anymore. Yeah, all right. Color coded? That's nice. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Are you gonna check put, it out. Are you yeah. going to put a picture of me up in there too? <laughs> We want to uh, be kinder <laughs> than that to our customers. Okay, I understand. Yeah. It's not fair yeah. though. I think our customer base is more into penthouse and less into you. A lot. <laughs> that is a good thing. Thank God. Hey, don't we usually give something away? We have, usually, uh, you do. You don't have anything? You have a random act of kindness. Yeah. I have a random act of coolness. Well, you gave me such a hard time last month. Wait a second. For being such a dweeb giving away a starter plate. So, 
the starter plate was not a gift. How can you give someone a starter plate? If you're building an EV, you need a starter plate. Why don't you just take one from the stock room? <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I got something. I saw Carl Reiner on the uh, Tonight Show the other night, and he gave uh, Jimmy Fallon a space pin. So we're going to give a reader a space pin. It writes upside down. It's a space pen. It writes underwater, and it writes over Greece. Okay, now that's worth something. Well, that's basically all three situations you find yourself in daily. So that's what I'm giving away. So you out nerded nerdiness. Yep. I did. I talked to you. I know you don't. You don't even have anything today, do you? Well, I, had, I, had, I had beads, <laughs> and the cop wouldn't take them. God, yeah. But they did go somewhere. They yeah. found a home. <laughs> World's worst suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cop, instead of a ticket, will you take some beads? Hey, it wasn't a bribe. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to share the spirit. Oh, man. You wanted nothing to do with that, by the way. <laughs> so send us an email at, uh, what is it, team at team evshow.com. Team at evshow. Yep. And um, tell us why you need to write upside down in the water over Greece. Tell me what you want to give away as the random act of coolness next time. Yeah. Since my beads almost got stolen. <laughs> Oh, boy. So I think we got a charging station somewhere down here. Yeah, you know, City Hall has a charging station in Coronado. Where is uh, City Hall? City Hall, two blank ports. It says check in. It says both ports are available. Oh, they're going to be right up here somewhere. I'm guessing right next to the handicap spaces because they'd love to put people with electric cars right in the front row. <laughs> One of the advantages of driving electric front row parking. Is that it right there? That's it right there. Yep, right there. There they are. Bam. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, that's not bad. Florida Bay Marina parking lot. Now, don't we have someone working with EV West who's making an electric boat? Oh, we got a couple guys doing some boats. I think we oh, we should do an episode on a boat. Yeah, we should have an electric yeah. boat ride. Yeah. An electric cruise. Yeah. And I can show some, I love bottom balancing on an electric cruise. Oh, look at this one's for wheelchair handicapped people. They got the low one and the big one. All right. Look at that. No parking except for electric vehicle charging. Shall we? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. These things are dangerous, man. He, oh, he got scared. <laughs> All right, we're charging. You're smart, you didn't have to Rochambeau and stick me with yeah, the bill. Right. I know, you know what happened last time you Rochambeau'd? <laughs> I lost. <laughs> smart enough. To, don't shock yourself. <laughs> Not this time. Not well, this time, Stiggins. <laughs> that's an impressive charge, John. It tells you exactly. Wait, what does that say? Your credit card's been declined? Oh yeah, declined. <laughs> what, were you doing? what were you buying back there? <laughs> nice. We took it to lunch. <laughs> I always feel like I get the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Are you gonna go through the Hotel Dar Del Coronado? Yeah, I think so. Let's do yeah, it. See, there, yeah. there we go. You bump yeah. the Ferrari again. You make you make the Ferrari the last thing on the show every time. Yeah, you know, it's saved the best for last. Okay, that's a nice compliment. I still feel like a, you know a bastardized stepson, but that's okay. <laughs> that's just you. So there's been a lot of things worth looking at. Yeah, there's. I mean, all, I'm really stoked to see all the progress going on. You've done a lot of engineering work. Done a lot of engineering work. I've seen the Faro arm. Yeah. You were mapping yep. the G50. Yep. Uh, you put together a new plate that's going to be for the tilt and throw out that we had to engineer and have water jetted. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just the sheer number of parts that we're having to machine for this thing is, uh, I think you're over your quota. <laughs> I, I, I can't, the amount of fine details, we're getting, we're actually getting stuck waiting for parts now at this point. Even we have our foot to the, to the floor acceleration on this project. Oh yeah. It's moving fast. I mean, I, I think you're going to see motors uh, probably next month coming in. This thing might be drivable in April. Is it moving fast? It's moving really fast. Because I thought I saw it moving really slow through the parking lot. <laughs> oh, let's zoom. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Gia, why don't we take a look and I'll prove it. Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's take a look at the Ferrari. All right. I know this is where the spare tire goes on the Ferrari. I'm not the spare tire. What we've got here is James's excellent work on plumbing the master cylinder for the clutch and the brake setup that has been fabricated by SRD. Notice we've bent the bar back just a little bit to give us enough clearance to get the 90 degrees under here. It is down to about that much of a clearance. Really tight space and 
Need small hands to get in there, but James is on this task very well. Notice the hoses have been plumbed in from the bottom of the reservoirs to the master cylinders for the dual cylinders for the brake setup front and rear. The reason we're doing that is when we've got the uh, regen device that's going to plug in the pressure transducer, and that is going to allow us to work and effectively uh, do the regen on the electric motors for regenerating the power for the batteries when we want in that mode. Uh, that's going to be hard plumbed right in the back of the brake cylinders. The uh, hydraulic clutch here is running down to the tilt and throw out bearing, which is going to be reverse pushing the uh, uh, clutch back out. And we need to hard line that all the way back into the transmission with a small braided cable between the two. Hey, I don't see Hutch around. Let's stick some Vegemite in his reservoirs. That'll stick it to him. So we've got the front suspension all put back in the Ferrari. I've uh, got the powder coated A-arms back in with all new bushings. Uh, QA1 fully adjustable front struts. Uh, new 300mm rotors with the uh, four pot Willwood, Willwood calipers. And we've also got the uh, black powder coated BBS rims off of uh, 360 Medina. Uh, they're going to go on here with some spacers so we get the right offset. It's going to look really nice. A lot of things this month, more lighting improvements on the Ferrari. We put the truck light 7 inch round LEDs in here, incredibly powerful, going to be great for night driving. LED side markers, tiny little round, almost a Euro look, nice fit. We filled all the holes when we did the body work. Battery box went in the front, carbon fiber lid put on that, and it sits perfectly in here. There's going to be 24 batteries here. We've got the CNC fully mounted in here, the hydraulic uh, uh, clutch and the brakes all ready to go. We have got the Canadian EV heater system installed underneath the dash where the air conditioner used to be. We plumbed it into the return vent line so it's recirculating for energy efficiency in the car. Got a real clean look. This is everything that needs to go in the front of the car. We're gonna cut a carbon fiber skirt around here and then just add some finish to the floor but it's gonna be fully exposed and look fantastic. We can put it's really important, and most people don't pick it up with an electric car, you can't exactly come up behind someone in a sneaky, quiet car, especially even bright red. You can still sneak up on somebody. So it's really important to have something like the doorbell in the car is a friendly, hi, I'm here. Otherwise, ah, Jesus. <laughs> All right, on the corner here, what we've done around the whole car is we've done uh, LED conversions. We wanted to get the European look with the white lens, uh, but since we have the DRLs and we have the truck lights, we wanted to use an amber LED light here, which uh, actually gives us the European look, but yet the uh, amber running light for US. We've also done the uh, LED bulbs for the turn indicators. Bream, great segment on the uh, Carmen Ghia, but I gotta tell you, the Ferrari's just gonna take it hands down. Watch this. Well, I think that about wraps it up for us in Coronado today, right? Yeah, this is beautiful. I love it down here. I'm gonna hang out uh, in Coronado for the rest of the day if you drop me off. <laughs> I'm gonna drop you off. I'm gonna head back to the house. I'm gonna go watch the uh, Formula E Miami. I'll record it because I want to watch it later. I'll record it. Yeah, I know you have something else to say. Yeah, right. Nothing else? Is that oh, it? no. No. Seriously. I'm going to be a dad next week. So I'm going to go home, going to watch Formula E. I'm going to get ready to have a baby. You're having a baby Monday morning at 10, 16 a.m. Something like that. <laughs> no, and then, uh, and then we're jumping into uh, the April show. Uh, yeah, well, so hopefully in April we'll have a show. Yeah. Hopefully. So we're hopefully in March <laughs> having a show. Yeah. Are you concerned about leaving us in the shop all week while you're out? Uh, I'm not concerned one bit. <laughs> I heard there was some vandalism to your truck last week. Yeah, right? There's some mirror. Pink penis? <laughs> this guy spray painted a pink penis it's on the shop truck. That's true. We have a picture of that. The great thing was, is we then stole his keys and wouldn't give them back until he took the pink penis off the shop truck. No, I rubbed it off the door. Oh, he rubbed the penis. So off the door. it gets better. He hot wired <laughs> my car reverse lights to the horn. Oh, yeah. We so when up. I hook my car up in reverse, the horn it, no one was behind my car. It's great. I keep using it. But we did get caught in the act. But we got something else planned for you. All right, once again, bringing the, another show to a close. Uh, appreciate our viewers hanging out with us. Yeah, thank you for joining us for the March show and all your feedback and comments. We love the uh, yeah. uh, commentary you guys give us. Look forward to the next show and see you then. Yeah, see you next time. Information there. Uh, I just got to fill out this one information here, but I'll give you a court date of uh, May 14th of 2015. On or before the day, you'll get information from the court. All right, you can't give me a warning just this one time. Sorry. It's, 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 I, Not a problem. I just got to ask, it's, man. It's I mean, you got to appreciate the car, right? I do, but you know it's electric. And we, we thought, <laughs> totally honestly,
seriously, dude. I thought that that was like legal because the white lane. I thought you were pulling me over because the car has carpool lane stickers. No, it's, and it's confused it's, uh, it's, cops before. It's a double yellow line, no matter what. Yeah. Okay. You can be in the HOV lane. I don't mind that. It's the fact it's a double yellow line. Yeah. Yeah. Not a problem. I totally understand. Are you sure you don't want to just let it slide just this one time? Well, we can give you some beads, though. <laughs> St. Patty's Day today, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think. I don't think that's helping. <laughs> uh, <everyone love> beans. <laughs> I'm done here, so I'm going to turn it over to Jehu, and he's going to show you how to use it. Jehu. <laughs> He gave her those beads. She loves the beads. <laughs>